So like I said, like I, I'm not claiming that I have understood everything. <laughs> uh, hopefully, like what we can do is like I, I will I will try to explain what I have understood, and maybe later, like or if you have like insight, like feel free to provide them. Like totally, I will need help. And uh, maybe later, when we have gone through the code and uh, more uh, like the concrete example, we can um, re re review that. Okay, because it's just at the end, like this is just three pages, but I spent hours. <laughs> so, I mean, the Bayesian uh, inference uh, is okay, but like the, uh, yeah, the, <clears throat> the inline stuff, like the integrate nested Laplace approximation, I guess I'll understand why it's an integrated nested Laplace approximation, but I do not understand why and how. But anyway, that's it. So let's wait a bit, like just two few minutes and we will see. But yeah, the, the book uh, on bias rules help a lot. Like you just on, a, uh, it's still uh, still not good with everything. Like yeah, there's still some trouble, I will say, but it's helped me a lot. And, um, but yeah, it's a difficult chapter. So maybe at some time, so I can go back to it and try to, Re revisit it. But yeah. I have like improved the, the way that I can show you stuff. Uh, I will push it on the repository. Like some uh, people um, in the geo computation with R helped me uh, doing it. You can, I didn't know that, but you can use LaTeX. You know, like we use it like for equation, like we use the math uh, plugin directly from our markdown to do the equation. But you can also use it inside of a, a, a code chunk. Like maybe I can show you uh, my uh, uh, while waiting quickly. I'll not spend too much time on it. Sure, uh, sure. And then here. No, not this one. This one. Uh, did you, Did you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So here. I will, I will, uh, can, I will include it. Uh, Pro global option, maybe global option. Can I? And where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Appearance. Let's put twenty-four. Apply. <clears throat> here. Oh, it's big. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that will be better. See here inside of the con chunk instead of R. You can use ticks. Ticks is a is a graph. It's some, it's an engine to do graphic in LaTeX, like to, to draw stuff. Uh, and you can uh, use it, like you can specify uh, its setting, which I specified here. And it's like uh, inside of the, <clears throat> the, the project repository, you have the setting here. Uh, it's here, so this is this file, you can open it. So this is just like uh, using some package and the, this package we are using is like the annotate equation that help to annotate the equation. So, and you have also like, I haven't used it now, but this package also allow you to color, to do like, to, 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 to put color on the equation. I will show you. But I think it's good, but uh, uh, it's maybe over the top. You will, because after like you have like all this LaTeX stuff to define. It's not difficult, but like, you know, it's LaTeX, it's very verbose. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, apparently no one is joining, so we can we can start. Let's go. Where is it? Uh, uh, so this is the book. Where is my? Uh, can I click on that? Yeah. Okay. So today we are the learning objective. I will increase the size also. Here is it better? <clears throat> Our learning objective is like uh, I have a quick introduction. Uh, of the Bayesian inference and INLA, which stands for integrated nested Laplace approximation. <laughs> I will finally get it at once. Uh, is a part of it, uh, it's part of the ecosystem, but it's as like another way of doing it. And we will have an introduction of it, of INLA, but it's, uh, it's mostly like on the conceptual part. Uh, uh, like and the kind of the proof of why it works on the 
mathematical part, but this is outside of my uh, understanding. But I will try to show you what I have understand and maybe we can build on that. This is my hope. <laughs> okay, so Bayesian inference uh, and why? Uh, well, <clears throat> we are dealing with Bayesian hierarchical model. So this basically means that uh, I will, we will define maybe a bit more later what's a hierarchical model and why it's useful. Uh, but the first point is like it's very often used uh, in the spatial and spatial temporal data and context. Uh, because uh, the building of the model are, are borrowing strange across space and time. Mostly, I think, but I could be wrong, I think it used the autocorrelation part to build the model. Like, you know, <clears throat> the first law of Tobler, which is like closer stuff are, are more likely related. Uh, and I think it's used this part to uh, build a model that help us uh, modulate and get the data. So to do that, this is the, a very quick, so this is, yeah, this is the idea, like, you know, with the annotate, you can like have the equation and directly annotate it on the, on the graphic. But it's, it's, it's need to save the graphic. It's not like, uh, it, it's, it saves some, it saves the figure and then load it. So it saves an image and then load it. So it's a bit, so. That's an image. Yeah, that's an image. <clears throat> It's not like uh, the HTML render it. <clears throat> so the first, like you have, like maybe I should show you that. Like you will, you will basically what we will build is like uh, uh, we, what we want is the probability uh, of some parameters that we are trying to get knowing the data, and this will take uh, the bias theorem. So I will, I will go like slowly into that. The, but the fi final result is always that. Mm. And this is the same theorems that are used uh, uh, to do some approximation and to like get, I mean, the part like the likelihood, the marginal likelihood, the post, the, um, the, pri the priors, the easiest parts, <clears throat> are all the parts that are used in the, to, to build the in lab. But let's, let's go simple first. So what we what we want is like or what we have is like a probability distribution called the likelihood. Uh, some people call it others, but a lot of times it's good. So for the authors, like the author of this book, you spy for probability. Well, in some other book, you will have like p or as a p uh, or p r sometimes. So this is like just annotation formal, and the probability is defined by two stuff: the data and the parameters. The parameters is, is called data here. And usually this is what you want to know. Like this is like, no, you have the data. This is what you know. This is the data is what is giving to you. <clears throat> and you want like to, under, to, to know the parameters. The parameters is like, uh, if I take like a small, the, the classical example or an easy example, like if say, like you are teaching in the class and you have a bunch of students and of the students are like some height. And you can have like a model of this eight, which will follow normal distribution of a mean of all the students and a standard deviation of um, <clears throat> uh, all the students. Obviously, uh, you do not have all the students. You have just a class of it, assuming like this class is representative of all the students. And this is what you want to get. You want to get the mean and the standard deviation. So the parameters of the normal distribution to get a model of your height, if your, the height of the student is what you are interested in, okay? I don't know if it's helped. So what, as you see, like what you want to do at the end is getting the posterior, which is the probability of the parameters knowing the data. <clears throat> okay. And in the likelihood is the kind of the, not the reverse, but like, already. okay. So what we have, like we have to give is a prior distribution. The prior distribution is what we know, uh, what we have like, um, <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's, it's defined by the parameters. Uh, it, we try to know the parameters and they are defined by other parameters. That's why we call them hyperparameters. That's parameters of defined parameters. Okay, then here you have two approach. As I are going full Bayesian and you specify hyper prior for this data, data, sorry. I think it's theta, yes. No, it's uh, eta. The little n is eta in Greek. 
I'm not too good with Greek letters. Uh, yes, so or you can just uh, another approach is using empirical bias. Well, you want you are using estimates. Like let's say I know the average age of a rich student is around something, so I will use that, and uh, I will use that to get the parameters. Okay, so as a you need to find a way to get this eta. When you get it, you can now do your uh, inference on eta using the bias theorem. Uh, uh, a quick reminder, the probability of uh, R, um, this is like, uh, remember, uh, because like, yeah, this is, this is it, see, uh, how do you go from like, so this is the posterior, this is what we want to know. Uh, is usually, uh, you can write it like uh, the probability of the data given uh, and the parameters uh, divided by the probability of the data. So you want to sum it up with the data. So, and you can like transform that with this uh, equation. So the, this is like a basic uh, probability. And this mean like, the, I think this is the joint probability of A and B is equal to the probability of R knowing B times the probability of B, which I think it's good. Yes, it is. And then on the, so we have what? We have the yeah, likely, is good? Yeah, yes, that, that's when A and B are not independent. So uh, I think they are independent, but I could be wrong on that. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to check. I don't know, I don't remember, sorry. So we are using like uh, the probability of our priors. This is P, I have to remember, and the likelihood we, we get it. And the denominator is called here the marginal likelihood, but sometimes it's also called like the <clears throat> normaliz normalizing constant. This is what we have used like in the bias rule. The term is used as was the normalizing constant. Why it's that the constant? Because it doesn't change according to uh, it doesn't uh, is it's free from theta. It doesn't change uh, because it's we will have an example later. But we are summing from all over the option. So whatever the va the value of theta, because we are summing from all over the option, it's the constant. So a lot of time people are using uh, you can do an approximation. I think I have write it later here. You can also like do this approximation. Uh, saying like the posterior will look like just the likelihood time uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the prior. It will give you the same shape, but the shape of the distribution will not uh, be, uh, will not sum it to one, which is not correct because the probability should be bound to zero and one. It's, it should be like as a, around it, it should be how it is. But if you do that, use the marginal likelihood, it will not sum it to one. Because like what you are trying to do is like having the, this is one of the parts that is difficult. And I will show you a quick, quick example. So I have stolen this example. I have not made it. Uh, I stole it somewhere. <clears throat> this is a proof of good, good education practice when you stole good idea from others, I guess. <laughs> so I, I have taken it from uh, Richard McElroy. I hope I spell it right, I think, yes. From Reseeking Statistic, you have videos, you have the everything. Uh, it, this is linked here. But other good reads is like obviously the chapter two of bias rules. And you can also find it on the air for data science communities where bias code have read it. So yeah, just use this example uh, to draw an analogy, like to make it maybe easier for you. I hope. Uh, maybe it's, it's not necessary, but I, uh, it wrapped my mind easier when I have a, an example and an analogy. Okay. So let's take a bag of uh, four marbles. Marbles, uh, uh, they, are, they can be blue, they can be white. So two colors, that makes stuff easier. And obviously marble are discrete, like you, just, you can count them. We do not know the exact composition. Right? We don't know what's inside the bag. We just know there's four marbles, but what, how many blue, how many white, we don't know. <clears throat> No. But we know what our option, but I will call that a bit parameters, not exactly parameters. Parameters will be defined a bit more later, but let's call that parameters like to, to make it easier also later. And we have data. We draw, we have, we draw three uh, with replacement. So I, I draw I, 
put my hand into the bag. I draw a marble. The first one is, is blue. I put it back. I draw it again. Oh, I get a white. I put it back. Oh, I get a blue. So let's try to define that like with a bit of R, let's say. So what what's could be inside of the bag? They can all be white. They can all be, they can be one white. Uh, no, one blue and three white. We can have a mix, a share mix, two blue, two white, or they can all be blue. So I have, I have drawn like this, this option here. So here, yeah, this is the, I, I draw all the option we can have. And they call it the pass. Uh, and here, yeah, this is like, I call it parameters, but we'll see it. So with our experiments, with our data, how is likely to draw like four whites? Well, it's imp impossible like to draw like uh, <clears throat> because like we have drawn one blue, one white, one blue. So this is not a possible pass because we know that at least we have one blue because we draw uh, from the bag. So this one, but also this pass where we know like in the bag is only um, blue. It's not possible because we draw also white. So that lead us to like this three pass. So let's let's see if we are drawing this one. If if this, this is what inside of the bag we can. So I draw one blue. I have just one option to draw one because there's this one in this in this possible pass, in these parameters. Then the my luck, let's say, of drawing uh, white is three because I have three. And the same stay for uh, the other drawing. So let's say this is three, one by three by one. This is the probability of drawing. Here, like, what's the probability of drawing uh, you, you, in, inside of, if the bag is you, you, white, white, blue, blue, white, white, it's two by two by two. I have like, if I, if I draw you, like you have like, I put mine into the bag, I have two chance to draw a blue one. Then if I will put it because it's for placement, this is to keep the same. So this path leads us to eight. Then if it's if we have more uh, blue than white, so with the data, we have like three way of drawing one blue, one uh, way of drawing one white because we just have one, uh, one uh, white and that, that leads us to that. Okay. Is it good? So let's <clears throat> let's rephrase that a bit. Mm -hmm. Now we are drawing another marble. Great, a blue one. So what are the paths? What are our options? Let's say uh, for every option we have. Well, this one still is not an option because we are drawing a blue one, and well, we know like th this is not an option. This one will give us four. Great. But with our previous data that we call here uh, prior, we know it's not possible because we have drawn white. So we know white is an option. So here, our number of way of drawing uh, U is one. Here, it's two. Here, it's three, because we assume there is three. This is just hypothesis. So now, <clears throat> this is what we have. So we just time it. We are just multiplying our new uh, data times the prior on your likelihood of every pass. This is like the pass, you can be understand of the likelihood of every, every step. And we are multiplying by the prior. So then one times three goes three, two times eight goes 16, et cetera. And this is just what I have like write in R here. Yeah. Okay, this is good. But uh, let's say what's, uh, if I ask you what's, uh, what's the option is more likely here? Okay, this is not one of you. All of you, go for it. I did not get you. You said what option? What what is it? What what's what's inside of the bag? What what do you what do you think is more likely to be inside of the bag? Or well, the last one, I think, is three that is in the bag. Yes, this is this is the one that provides the more probability. But yes. you know, we can also have like this one or this one, but obviously with less uh, probability, okay? 
let's rephrase that. We can go a bit further, like instead of having like, you know, uh, this number of paths, we can, we can frame it as P, which is the proportion of blue marble. If I go with it, like this is zero, the probability is zero. I do not have uh, blue marble. Uh, if it's here, like this is the probability is one, like it's four and everything is like that. <clears throat> so if we, if we uh, do it, like we, we multiply the probability by the pass, we get the marginal likelihood of it. It's not exactly the, it's not exactly the margin. Uh, we get, the, which is like, uh, you know, just here, like which is the pass divided by the sum of the pass. So it's just like, you know, like three divided by uh, three plus eight plus nine. So this is this, uh, I don't know if it makes sense a bit more. This is the marginal, this is the sum of every possible option we get. Is it better? And then we can do the same like, uh, no, I'm here and that's it. Is it, is it like a better way to understand like the Bayesian theorem? Keep in mind, like we'll use the marginal world a lot. Uh, it's basically a marginal is like what, a, a sum on the marge, which is basically like a sum. Like you have like various colon and on the marginal, you get the sum of it. And you cannot get also get the sum on the total. Like here, the total should be one because by definition, we are summing all the option divided by the sum uh, of the pass we can take. So if it doesn't make sense to you, I highly encourage you like to go through slowly uh, with the, where is it? With this chapter two of this book. Uh, he have also videos and uh, he's, he's doing a better job than I am explaining it. But this is basically like, this is an analogy on <clears throat> Bayesian theorem. We are doing exactly the same stuff. This is what I have said, like, yeah, our distribution was discrete. Like we have just marble and we can definitely pass the way. Uh, I mean, we can, we can draw a mental pass of what pass lead us to our data. What's option? Yeah. But when yeah. you have like, yes, Frederick. Yeah. Can the, you should you um you should imagine like you have a, a an area where yes. an event can happen. Yeah. Okay. So that area is the sum of the probabilities of for this for that event to be to 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 happen. Okay. Then yes. you have an event which has a probability that can occur. Yes. On that area. Yes. Okay. So the integral is an area. When you, you make an integral, you yes. obtain area. So yeah. you have area of the probabilities that can event that happen. And then you have the marginal probabilities, which are the probabilities of a part. So um, of something that can happen within that area of probability. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 like if I go back to your presentation, I will say depends of all you like the you have the domain like the R you call this is the domain uh, of the the process you want to measure. Let's say like any uh, let's say like you have air pollution, and uh, for the sake of example, and uh, this air pollution have a probability of happening inside of this area then you measure uh you are measuring like you have you cannot measure the air, uh the air pollution everywhere so you have like uh let's say like meteorological stations that are located that are located at particular places that are getting you like let's say like, um, uh, partic uh, um, particles and stuff like that or some chemical stuff and you have, the, you have like info inside, this is your data. Uh, then you will need, uh, this is the um, two stuff, the 
the point this is the support of your information is a point it's not an area like the distinction between like let's say uh you are you are checking like uh death of uh actual burst uh around like uh counties administrative boundaries so here this is another kind of support here with the pollution you have point data uh, and the pollution is a, a continuous variable you know it's not like it's not discrete uh, so you will need to have like uh, the magic of the probabilities like you will draw like uh, a distribution that follow that and uh, it will depend of uh, the shape of the domain and uh, where the measures are taken. I don't know if it makes sense, but we'll have to go into that because there's various options to do that. Geostatistic is one and probably in lies another one. I don't know if it's clear. This is okay, but yes, the you can you can the marble, you can imagine it's the uh, it's hard to translate it in a special way. So it's a good question. But uh, you can, this is the idea of the marble is the same. Like what the what probability are doing is like, what are my options so that I have like pollution here, pollution here, pollution here, pollution here, pollution here. And we are kind of counting. Uh, I mean, this is difficult count. That's why you have integral. That's why you have multiple integral uh, to get all the option uh, you can get. You know, this is like, uh yeah it's easy we can just do simple scenario but with air pollution we are basically like trying to form a way to count all of the options possible and pick and draw the distribution of all this option this is what we are trying to do that's why it's complicated because uh unlike the bag of marble it is it is like you have way more option and so counting them become complicated. So that's why you need maths. And that's why it's difficult sometimes to understand. Okay. And the, this param these parameters integ integrating, this is like a sum, but imagine like if you have more than one, it become like sum of sum of sum. You, you, you start to integrate a lot of complicated stuff and it's become difficult. Like knowing this part here, like this is it. Uh, it's become way, 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 way super complicated. That's why people are using simulations through Markov chain Monte Carlo to generate samples that are close to uh, this distribution uh, of the parameter. That's what we want to know. <clears throat> and they developed a uh, various algorithms that are implemented. Uh, th there's different algorithms that have the Hamilton Monte Carlo, you have like the um, uh, jib, sample, jib, jib samplers, and all these algorithms also have different software implementation. Uh, that's one of them is Winbugs, you have JAGS. I think both of them are jib, jib samplers, are there no indicate GS for jib samplers, and standards use another kind of uh, way of doing it. Okay, this is complicated because you need also like to diagnose this sample. Uh, I will not go into it. You can check also like the book bias rule, but this is an approximate, I mean, it's not an, yeah, you can say, let's say it's an approximation uh, of it. And you are like just using it as a way of generating uh, uh, all the options you want to count. Remember like the, the, you are using it to get what we can do here easily because we have few options. We are using this uh, tools, algorithms, to generate that and more likely um, the algorithm is generating something more likely it should be in the in the reality this is how i understand it maybe wrongly okay there are great tools but they are heavy on computing uh, that's why like when you are using uh when your model following a latin gaussian models we can make some assumption and approximation that lead us to INA. So we will not rely on this Markov chain Monte Carlos to, uh, um, to do the computational part, like trying to get an approximation of uh, 
all the all the paths, all the power of what can lead to our parameters. Uh, but just uh, this. Okay. Okay, this is where like we are doing an integrated nested Laplace approximation. I still do not get it. I tried hard. But <laughs> so uh, I will try to at least go with it. So they are used. Uh, they are used also outside of spatial and spatial temporal model. Like here, they can also be used for generalized linear uh, mixed models. I link it like to uh, this uh, website where the author here like uh, I've gone through the exercise of the book that I have just cited. That's use Stan. And instead of using Stan, like the Monte Carlo chain marker, uh, they use it in lab. Okay. This model follow a global uh, structures. That's is very this is just a family of model and it's very difficult to explain them because I will try it still. <clears throat> okay, so why is our data? Our data is following two stuff. X which is a, a Gaussian field, or also known as a latent Gaussian field, or also known as latent effect, or also known as a Gaussian marker of random field. These terms are, look like similar to me on the literature I have with you, but I could be wrong. So this is basically a joint normal distribution. Uh, in multi so you, only, you do not have one, you have plenty of normal distribution. That, that's how joined together. That's mean like uh, the, they are related, they are correlated. I mean, they are, uh, you can draw covariance between them. <clears throat> we'll see the, the, this is defined here. So it's an hierarchical model because like, uh, and this will lead us to like the probability of our data knowing uh, the parameters of our Gaussian field and here theta is is like an a parameter and hyperparameters. This is like a, a shortcut that's uh, is housing a batch of parameter and hyperparameters. And why is the number of dimension uh, or Gaussian field is taking it? The second layers is like trying to define this Gaussian field. So we we'll use this is why it's a hierarchical model. Like we want uh, <clears throat> to uh, define um, our probability using uh, like some other layers that will get us to the upper layers. That I still do not understand uh, why, uh, what, I mean, the, I understand the hierarchy, but I do not get it now. So this model is just following a normal distribution, a joint normal distribution. That's have like various new uh, of it. That's the mean. It's still a normal, uh, but inside instead of getting uh, one standard deviation and one variance, it gets a, a covariance matrix. Uh, it's not a covariance matrix. It's a precision matrix, which is the inverse of uh, a covariance matrix. That's like all of our parameters. So imagine like, let's say we have two parameters, two theta. We have a covariance matrix of size of four, like theta, th let's say theta A, theta B, theta S, A, it will be theta A and theta A, theta A and B, theta B and B and theta B and A. So we will draw like basically like the variance, the covariance of uh, A and B and et cetera, et cetera. And if you have three parameters, that will lead you to a matrix of nine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and here, this is just the definition of the prior, uh, which uh, keep in mind that this is not, this is the prior, this is not parameter, this can be parameter plus hyperparameters. Because like you can, okay. So this is like basically what I have it. Uh, why, are we, we, why are we using precision instead of variance? The, remember, the precision uh, is the inverse. So uh, one divided by C of the, the, the variance. I didn't know, so I Google it. <laughs> and uh, we said like it provides an easy time on computation. 
And on a multivariable normal distribution or joint normal distribution, what we are using, it makes stuff easier on uh, the maths. So I do not understand, but the wiki wasn't clear, but it's helps us. This is how I understand it. Okay. And uh, we are as you uh, should have in space. <clears throat> no, no, this is a, a very broad and general uh, model. Like it doesn't necessarily relate to uh, INLA. This is just like, you know, INLA, if you have a model that look like that, maybe INLA is a good solution. So for example, Federica, when we are using um, like the chapter 17 of Bayes rule, maybe INLA could have been a good solution for uh, our exercise because this is similar model. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can I? Can you just uh, can, can you just scroll up a bit? Sure. Go back up a bit. Okay. So basically, uh, this is not um, because sometimes you know you know better than me because you haven't done in those things many times, no? But sometimes it's difficult to tell the other how a, a complex model is composed. So they need to uh, like use um, uh, uh, symbols that yeah. represent that, 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 that model, no? So it's like a, a matrioska. So you have this uh, uh, X distribution, the second line, no? Yeah. It's inside the, first the X on the first line. Yeah, and that's it. Theta that's it. inside. Uh, the, those are the pieces that explain that uh, how 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 they are composed basically. Yeah. So uh, the the x depends on theta. Yeah. And this supposed to have a normal distribution. Uh, theta Continue. does not need to have normal distribution. Yeah. Then uh, the the theta is the prior, so you have some probability that, that an event can happen, and you yeah. start from that, you know? That's, that's, and then you have, so that event can happen, uh, and so another one happen based on, on the probability that the first event has happened, yeah. okay, or would happen. Yeah. So then you have the, 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 the entire comp composition, no? Which is why it it has a, a certain trend and a, of, of that of probability. It's, I mean, it's a density of the probability that yeah. shapes the distribution of the probabilities, and th this is the why, which is our classical model. No, you know, yeah. you have uh, yeah the beta, the x, and the other parameters that you might have if you have a model adjustment as as a, uh, inla is yeah. inla is just a, a, an adjustment of a normal classical regression model uh, yes yeah. yes it is you, I see. You, have, you have a piece that you add or so you modify a bit that that classical uh, function for your model with an adjustment Yes. Which is the no, Laplace no. approximation. Yeah. And what I, I meant to ask for, with this <laughs> uh, with this intervention is that when you do uh, geospatial modeling, yeah, you have two chances, or or better. You 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 uh, you consider when when you uh, analyze an event that up in a set certain area okay yeah. what do you do when you do spatial modeling is considering um i'm, I'm, I'm not sure if i'm telling uh word correctly yeah you you consider the distances yes. within points i mean okay. you have to you have to inject some distances whatever you call distances but at one point because like yeah. the distances can be like metric distances like for example the pollution it makes sense Okay. But uh, for like, uh, let's say like the deaths of infants uh, by between counties, yeah. you will have to use another kind of distances. People use neighbors, neighbors are n, neighbors are n minus one. Exactly. 
that, that so you have uh, ma mainly two branches, no? The Euclidean distances yeah. and Laplace distance. Uh, I do not know if it's Laplace. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I, I, I will Maybe. provide you with, with the, the source of this, uh, <laughs> this thing because. Um, uh, and uh, th this will group uh, two main uh, type of modelings that you might want to use when you do spatial data, spatial, not spatial model, spatial data, spatial model. And uh, uh, this, uh, the use of Laplace, okay, Laplace yeah. is, is simply an integral. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's a Gaussian, like we can say Gaussian too, yes, okay. It's an, it's an integral. So yeah. it basically takes consideration of the area yeah. where the event happened, okay? Yeah. And use this, uh, this integral to calculate the area. So yeah. you then use this calculation to model as, as, as model adjustment on your classical model function. Okay, and you have the inla. Yeah. I think this is like uh, one way. Of, it's, I think the mod mental model is correct. This is like some things that happen, like let's say like it's a mental model. But on the map model, I, I'm unsure if it's like that. But yes, I cannot no. tell. <laughs> no. uh, okay. <laughs> but I think at the mental model, uh, on my point of view, every special modeling is just a way to take into account autocorrelation. Like geostatistic, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, sorry, just yeah. modeling uh, autocorrelation on the on the big. Uh, it's a way. Uh, it's a way to measure autocorrelation on stuff that are closer or not closer. So the biogram is just like just, yeah. just doing that because, uh, because yeah, and like the weighted specially weighted regression. Another way of doing it, like you are just uh, modeling like the autocorrelation. Gaussian process the same. All of this model uh, are using the correlation of stuff that are happening uh, close to them or not, or not to at the end produce an estimation. Yeah. Oh, and I think this is what Inla is doing, but that's why I'm reading the book. I'm not sure, and that's why I want to <laughs> I progress on so. that. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is what it's doing, like what, uh, but. As I said, like uh, I'm unsure, so. But my goal is progressing. Yeah. and I also like to add one more thing, sure. just to, to precision about about the precision. So you know that when you make mathematical modeling, so when you know you, th th there's a like uh, basic um, uh, things uh, properties that says if you multiply the both sides of the equation or if you divide yeah. both yeah. sides of the equation for a certain number uh nothing changes yes yeah. so that that's what is happening oh, okay. with the precision matrix okay you just do the reverse of the thing in a way that you because it's manageable apparently as they explained uh yeah, yeah. I know I know a lot of tools uh, when you are modeling. I know, for example, Jags. Jags uh, when you uh, when you define uh, Jags uh, when you define a normal model into Jags, it uses precision also. It doesn't use variance, so you just have to convert it. I assume it's for yeah. I do not I didn't know why. Just like you know some, but I assume it's because of that also, and because like the conversion is easy to do, but it's maybe help letters on another part. But I do not know. Okay, so uh, yes, mm. so this should uh, be on another line, but like you said, like to get the mean of our observation, we'll assume the mean uh, is following, uh, is like it's following some linear equation with like a linked function, which is the inverse. Uh, and this is the, the function. The function is like the, a linear predictor. So we are like the mean is like uh, a linked function of this linear predictor. Yeah, assuming an exponential one, uh, which is the intercept all the time. Uh, here, a first component 
that are the linear effect of the covariates uh, on the response, what we want to know, and uh, a set of function of random effects. Uh, I like something here uh, on the mu g u. This is a bit fell. This is not by theorem. I've just copy past it. <laughs> I have to correct that. Uh, and then you can, like you said, replace uh, on the model here the x by that, more or less by that. Uh, <clears throat> and this will help us, but I do not understand how, uh, doing uh, the inline step. <clears throat> Then, uh, when we focus uh, what stuff that are different from uh, MCMC and INLA, is like we are focusing on marginal, posterior marginal. So we are focusing on the sum of uh, the results and not getting all the available options. Uh, this is like uh, a distinction, like this is one of the big uh, distinction between like MCMC and um, and in that is like instead of having the old joint posterior distribution for every parameters, we'll just get a summary of it, which is usually called a marginal because it's on the margin. This is how I understand. And also, we are doing some approximation. <clears throat> so this is the two distinction. But this allows us to be like the author said, accurate and fast. So this is an example of what we can get. On with inla, so you get the posterior marginal of the compon component of the Latin Gaussian. Remember, we need all of this to get back to our hierarchical model to get what we want at the end, which is the uh, probability of our parameter knowing the data. We still want to know that. This is the, always the same goal. We want to have a model at the end that predicts or describes something. And for that, we need to uh, produce. <coughs> Uh, to get an estimation of our parameter knowing the data. Like, even with the marble, if I'm going here, what we want is <clears throat> like a model that gives us uh, the, the, the all possibility uh, of what's inside of the bag for uh, knowing the data that we have seen. But uh, this is more complicated here. So we had the posterior marginal of the hyper parameters. So this is the parameters that have been used by uh, this part here. I mean, this is not exactly this part, but the same. Uh, and the posterior marginal of each element of X. So this is like, no, the, the, this is the posterior of the whole field. Then the, every field, you need to get it. Then the posterior marginal of the hyperparameters at the, the theta. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I do not understand why it's theta g. It should be theta to my understanding, but I could be wrong. Then I, I save you sometimes. At the end, this allows us to get what we want <laughs> with a bunch of approximation and uh, calculate, which is basically an approximation of the probability of the parameters knowing the data. Let's take the sum of some probabilities of the parameters knowing the data times an approximation. Okay. I do not claim that I can explain it, but for the stuff that we maybe we will use later is you have three ways of doing approximation. As I you do a Nap Gaussian approximation, as I you do a Laplace one, which is more costly, but apparently take into uh, account a possible skewness into the distribution. So that will mean like a Gaussian approximation. I assume it's used the normal distribution and symmetric. So you are like basically uh, have the same on both sides. Apparently, the Laplace approximation like allow you to have like a distribution that's in more right or left on the side of the distribution. And by default, also in love for a simplified version of the Laplace approximation. Uh, it's just used by default. Okay. I don't know if I make myself clear. I'll wrap me. You haven't speak it. <laughs> but I hope we will understand it more later on the later chapters.
But okay. yeah, but basically, if I if you have to if I have to sum it up, if our model follows some kind of form, the form like that, we can use it now. And then <clears throat> what? Uh, it's a hierarchical model where you have like a first layers that will be fitted into that the second layer will be fitted in the first one and the prayer will be fit on both of them. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, what I was trying to say, I will still have to go through the chapter because the chapter is a bit broad. I still have to go through it again. Why you push it to be the repo? Yeah, I will push it. I will push it just, I'm, I'm correcting like uh, this and this, and I have that and I will correct and push it. But I also link to two resources. This blog post was helpful uh, to understand at least uh, the bias model a various uh, layer of the model and how do they fit themselves? It explains like more like um, how do we <clears throat> it go a bit more into detail than the book and all like every layers uh, will uh, need the other layers to produce uh, what we need here. You know, <clears throat> and you have another book that I have linked that also go a bit more deeper into it. And with more like, uh, that's it. But yeah, I think Frederica is right. Uh, like, I do not think it's important to understand it all, but uh, I will need to get uh, a better the correct mental model of what you are doing. Like, basically you are needed like, um, what you want always is like the, this posterior distribution, which is what are my parameter knowing my data, and uh, to do that, uh, you need like to define the parameters, which is which using like this, uh, how is it called? Latent Gaussian field. That's also the parameters that you need to set, and then you use the tools that do all of that. Yeah. And Eric, can I just say? Uh, yeah, sure. Right. I had to go back to to something. Um, my my presentation. Okay, so <laughs> because sure. I, I wanted to to say exactly what 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 he said. The, what is the difference? And uh, basically, you have this these two um, uh, uh, point of view. Okay. Uh, no, it's not, they're not the two uh, methodologies, okay, to calculate the, the point distances, okay. Yeah. And you usually do Eulerian models, uh, and so to calculate the distance for the things that you, you said, you know, for yeah. temperature, land cover, or I don't know, pollution and everything. While you do Lagrangian models to track movement of an object. Uh, and like a virus, okay, it's considered as a point that moves in a yeah. certain area because affects other people. So it's like moving around, okay? Getting... Yeah. No? Yeah? Uh, no? I'm not, I do not know too much about that, but maybe. All right. So you I'm use sure. the Lagrangian uh, model oh, yeah, like, yeah. to track the movement of object in space. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how that is related with the Laplace? I do not know. Uh, Laplace is a very broad term, like to differ. I mean, it's, 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 it was a guy, <laughs> it's, uh, a mathematician from the 18th centuries, I guess. Okay. Uh, uh, and. He developed a bunch of uh, tools that we are still using. Um, this is not, notably like the La Laplace approximation <laughs> of uh, this joint normal model. Uh -huh. I think when you are speaking about um, movements data, uh -huh. usually you can use like uh, tools, but a lot of people are using physical model. Like, uh, you know, I like just, uh, let's say someone is moving, uh, it can move uh, on specific direction and then the movement is like some vectors speed and then with that you can 
but I'm not into that, so I cannot. I do not know too much. Sorry. Because we we are doing uh, health. Uh, so we are doing geo health. Geo what? Sorry. Geo health, no. Yeah, uh, I do not know if we will go into uh, moving stuff. I think we'll just stay on the spatial stuff. I do not think we'll do spatial temporal. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, in the book, I mean, in the book. I think the book will not go into movements. I, I'm sure about it, like I have to read it, but I think we'll stay on the just the special without movements. Okay. The movement will involve time. And I do not think we are doing it. We don't do it. No, but, um, okay. But theoretically, Inla is supposed also to handle that, okay. the time and space. Of what I have seen and read in the, uh, in, in the modeling of space and time, usually you are focusing yourself in one of the two and you are aggregating on the others. Mm -hmm. Let's say you are more interesting into time, you will produce aggregates of some spaces then you will fluctuate that on the time. Let's say now the reverse, you, you have some movements uh, on the time and you will aggregate this, like uh, let's say you have air pollution, for example, that's go around like some cloud that's moved. Uh -huh. exactly. You will just do some average on some spaces of the time and do the model on it. Uh -huh. This is what I have seen a lot, but can, could be wrong. They move. They, they move as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. I hope it was good enough. It mm -hmm. was difficult, so. Uh, and I hope that next week when we are doing the package, uh, Enla will understand it a bit more. Okay, so let me check uh, who is doing next week. I think it's also me. Uh, let me check who's doing it. Uh, well, open it. Oh, yeah, I've opened 10 times now. I'm still sharing. I will stop sharing. Yeah. Okay, I stop sharing. Uh, no one. Does we have a volunteer? Oh, is it me? Okay. So I can do the next and then. Uh, Hopefully, uh, that will help me understand it more. And that will let me close some. I have opened it 10 times. Are you with me? It's good. Oh, I'm lagging. Stop sharing. Zoom, are you here? Thank you. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's bye. Wait. Oh, bye. Bye. I, bye. I'm not moving, but uh, see you next week. Okay, see you next week. I will push, uh, I will finish the, the stuff now. Okay. Bye.